This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, and of course, this is the Realities Temple on Earth. I first wish to say to all of my Caucasian or white uh, viewers, and that if you are sensitive about frank, honest, talk about the real history of your race, or people, then it is best that you do not listen to the words within this commentary. I would hope that you would listen to these words as an open, no holds bar dialogue. It is needed in order to correct a problem that have had, that have had no solution for now over 300 years. We are doing ourselves a disservice being what they call a liberal or politically correct. Our true feelings should be allowed to be shown as we can deal with real feelings instead of something manufactured for public display for fear that we should be looked down upon for stating a truth or the truth that may feel but also afraid to say in public. This is very hypocritical because society in its treatment of certain races or genders will reveal the, re the reality hidden by fake smiles. I do not know will I ever come to you with a false smile and tell you in your face what I think about you. However, this does not mean we bring out the guns as perhaps true and honest dialogue is all that is needed. If a white person feels the need to use the word nigger, then he or she should be able to express him or herself, as so. It is the ones that keep nigger to themselves are the ones we need to guard against. If blacks wish to call white devils or hunkies, they should also be able to express themselves. We should be open and honest about how we feel. So if you do not want to uh, or do not wish to hear open and honest commentary, then perhaps you should unsubscribe and go back to your thoughts and fictional world. Name calling doesn't always have to express hatred. It sometimes only expresses frustration or deep misunderstanding. I am sure many of you have called your parents, of whom you love, out of their names at one time or another. However, this did not mean you hated them or wanted to murder them, of which sometimes uh, happens in extreme cases, unfortunately. If we are able to name call, but remain civil in our discussion, it is possible to result in real solutions. The problems of black and white in these United States have continued for over 300 years. It is due in part that both parties refuse to become honest and open, least to say honesty, so uh, I'm going to say, now, honestly or truthfully, some do not want good race relations as they benefit or profit from this conflict. In the case of some whites in power, they will fight tooth and nail in order to maintain the privilege of a society that favors white skin over the dark. At the same time, shake your hand in friendship. I wish to make something perfectly clear that I am stating this opinion not to help those who have a hatred of white or Caucasian people, nor am I pretending to have love for whites when in reality I do not as one seeking friendship may not be seen as making this most critical commentary. Again, if you cannot, as a Caucasian or white person, accept the truth of your people as, a, as supported by your own historians and scientists, then I suggest that you stop this video and go elsewhere, but curiosity will make you stay and perhaps that is good. It would not benefit those whites or Caucasians in power to paint themselves before their people in the negative. American whites or Caucasian Europeans in general have actually fallen for the lie and belief they have a righteous or angelic history of which is far from true. They paint, for instance, to their babies.
that George Washington never told a lie. At the same time, the reality was he was a slave owner and racist man. You had to be a racist in order to own another human being. And then you turn around and turn that human being into an animal. This is ignored to teaching children. The goal of today's talk is to bring to the attention of black people the origin and why Caucasian Europe people, European people think and do what they do. Dark people's failure to understand Caucasians has caused them to be in the inferior position they are in today. It is good that whites also listen so they may understand that those Caucasian people or whites in power understand how they think and why they think the way they do. So with that said, and out of the way, I have no choice but to say what is on my mind regardless to who agrees or disagrees. Hopefully, such will cause us to become more open and frank in discussing race and the role that blacks actually play in American society. I wish to begin this conversation with the Caucasian's origin. And with this, I must use a little dramatic license as there were no historians able to document such, but bits and pieces have come together in theory based on the Caucasian own scientists. Again, I need to use a little dramatic license as well because what I'm going to say it sounds logical and it seems to bring valid reason for certain behaviors now exhibited by the racist European Caucasians or white people. From now on I will call Caucasian European people uh, European people uh, just that as they are not white. They gave themselves the name white people. They are Caucasian. Uh, white is defined as pure and righteous. But clearly, they not, according to their own record, shown behavior that is pure or righteous. Now, when I was a child, I was introduced to the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Since that time, I have questioned and rejected some of his teachings. However, as a child, I was drawn to his book called Message to the Black Man in America. I went straight to the table of contents and to the chapter called The Making of a Devil. This was his expl explanation of how Caucasians came to be. I will shorten the story for the sake of time. I am, I am including this within my commentary because this origin explains many things not understood about why Caucasians do what they do. It is important that we learn how to understand these things. If we know why animals, plants, or people do what they do, then it is easier for us to counter anything negative or harmful one may raise against us. If we know the mechanics of a car, when it ceases to start, perhaps we can uh, repair what has become in failure. Some people, due to their understanding of dangers and wild beasts or animals, can live among them because they understand what angers them or causes them to behave in certain manners. The reason of why black people have no cordial or uh, they have problematic relationships with Europeans is because they do not understand, I'm sorry, they do not understand who they are really dealing with. When we think of white people or Caucasians, we think of Billy Bob the next door neighbor who invites you uh, over to share his barbecue. Or we think of uh, the Ku Klux Klan. Or we think of George W. Bush. These Caucasians are just twigs 
on the power tree of European people. In fact, American Caucasians are the baby of these nations. As great as Caucasian peoples are, they do not like to talk about their origin, but it is what it is. And we'll go more into that in part two of this series of videos. Please be patient and please and, and hang with me. Let's move on to the next one. Alrighty then. Are you still with me? Okay. Let's continue this. As great as Caucasian people are, or even as great as an individual may be, they do not like to talk about their origin or their beginning. But it is what it is. I love to hear folks brag about their accomplishment of their great education or athletic abilities or the money they have, of which is nice at the same time, in all of it, we lose or uh, our humbleness and we become arrogant in the belief you are more than what you actually are. So I remind them that indeed they are great, but just a few years ago you were nothing but sperm, mixed with ovum. You and I were nothing to speak of. We may marvel at superstar Michael Jackson, but if we saw him in his beginning as sperm and ovum, you would frown your face. We have been made to view sperm and ovum as something nasty, but it is the beginning of all of us, no matter how great you believe you are. Then death, the great equalizer, comes around and takes you out of this world, no matter how rich, no matter how poor, smart, dumb, black, white. No matter what you are, death takes you out. With the help of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I wish to present that humble beginning of a race of people of whom within the short span of 6,000 years would conquer this planet and the humanity before it. Elijah teaches that blacks prior to, to uh, the Caucasian people were living a righteous life. I beg to differ, but we'll begin as such. These many years ago, the black man, the Asiatic and original man, the first human on this planet was said to be living in a world that can only be compared with the description of heaven in religious teaching. Nothing but the paradise. But it seems that those living in this heaven or paradise were becoming very unappreciative of this as many of us are today. We do not appreciate running water. We don't appreciate the abundance of food and having our limbs, being able to see, hear, and walk properly. We take things and they took life for granted as though life owed them something. So Elijah teaches that with 100% dissatisfaction comes 100% change. Since they did not appreciate this beautiful and peaceful way of life, then a baby was born of a woman that would reflect such dissatisfaction. Elijah Muhammad teaches he was born and named Yaqub. He is known as Jacob in the Bible. And as a child, Yakub, grown fond of playing with pieces of steel in the form of magnets. Yakub also was born with a head much bigger than the average person. He would later be known as 
the big head scientist. Before I continue, may I remind us that this is just a story, that it may not have validity, as there is no proof that Yaku or even these blacks actually existed. However, I can't just ignore this cause as we continue this examination, it brings us answers to otherwise we may not have none. And sometimes these stories do have truth in them. As I move forward, we'll begin to see how such is relevant. One day, Yaku's uncle would ask him, what is it that he finds fascinating about playing with steel? Yaku told him he liked how opposites attract. And one day, he would make a people who are like steel and be able to attract black folks. His uncle would reply, would these people also cause mayhem and chaos, destruction? Basically, for Yaku, <laughs> it was for him to know and his uncle to find out. Yaku will grow up to become a top scientist as well as religious leader. Yaku became a master in what we know now of as the study of DNA. He became very influential among the people and the leadership began to view Yaku as a threat and the king summoned him. A deal was made and the leadership financed Yaku and those who wanted or wished to follow Yaku, he financed Yaku so that they may leave from among this kingdom. So Yaku and his followers set sail. They set sail on ships and they landed on an island that uh, was called Patmos. Some call it the Garden of Eden, as this will be the birthplace of a people, not an individual called Adam. Years ago, Yakub told his uncle about making a new people that would eventually become enemies to the darker people. One of the first things Yakub began to do was not allow dark people to marry one another. Black people, even without the rape of Caucasian people, can produce from very dark to very light individuals. Yaku ordered that only light to light, dark to light folks would be allowed to marry and reproduce. When a very dark baby was born, it was taken away and killed. The mother was told a lie that her baby went to heaven or some other special place. There was great joy when light babies was born. So in this, we see the activity of lies being told to murder the dark. So the process of the birth of white or Caucasian people, this is how the process of the beginning of the uh, beginning of Caucasian people began. The process in order to bring them into being by destroying the dark, saving the light. Yaku himself would never see the fruit of his labor, but he began a process that would change humanity as the world knew it forever till the present time. After a period of time, the inhabitants of this island were no longer dark, but turned brown. The weaker or the recessive gene of the dark. And soon, due to overpopulation, these brown people will begin to leave. And every 2,000 years, more or less, the lighter people will begin to leave the island, going elsewhere, developing their own ways of life in their chosen environment. Then the time comes when babies are now being born with blonde hair and blue eyes the first Caucasian people. 
the first Adam. Adam was not an individual. Adam was a people. Please remember that all of these races are from the dark. Black people, uh, and they came from black people due to this process of murdering the dark. So it should not be a surprise that hatred for dark comes from all these other races. Uh, those being closer to the Caucasians more intense as their exposure within this process was longer. The Caucasian people were born from a process of lies and hatred for the darker. It has become part of their being, part of their genetic makeup. The first question that may arise, if this is true, then why do some white do not behave like they hate black if it is their nature? And we're going to go further into that in the next video. Hold on. Hold on. Come on with me now. All righty then. Are you still with me? Now, if you're... If you don't understand what I'm trying to say or you're off a little bit, please uh, feel free to go to the more info box. I'm putting this whole uh, commentary on each video in the uh, more info box. I believe I left off we was explaining that the uh, if it is natural or it is the, in, in the Caucasian's genetic makeup to behave a certain way, why do some of them uh, don't behave like that or in a certain manner? The first question that may arise, if this is true, then why do some whites not behave like they hate blacks? if it is indeed their nature as what is a, a, attempted or attempting to be said here. If we look at chicken or any life form, you always find those outside of the box. But overall, a chicken is a chicken. And European Caucasians, according to their history, then and now demonstrate hatred and frown upon darker people. Approximately 6,000 years ago, these new white or Caucasian people also must leave this island and many end up back on the land belonging to the people that Yaku exiled himself from. Perhaps being violent among themselves and ill-treated themselves, these blacks saw these strange and new people as a curiosity, but nevertheless welcomed these strange people with open arms. These new people began to integrate within this black society. Not long after their arrival, this place, once known as a paradise among the blacks, these uh, black people began to experience high rates of disorder, disputes among families and friends. Citizens began to murder each other, chaos and dysfunction among the people, and the leadership finally figured out these things didn't start happening to the appearance of these new and strange persons. And it was actually them who were causing these things. Remember, these new people were born due to falsehood and murder of the black. They began to use their skills to trick and lie to cause problems among the people. The new people learned how to smile while stabbing you in the back, causing the trouble, then befriending both of the warring parties so that they can control both of the fighters. The leadership became outraged and ordered all these new people to be rounded up in exile. Some blacks had grown to love these new people and they were hidden. Those that were found were stripped naked and made to march across a hot desert, escorted far away from the kingdom. You don't believe this treatment would cause some love for blacks, do you? 
If somebody did that to you, would you love them? So now, we leave Elijah's teaching and go into Europe on where these people eventually wind up uh, living in. Forced to live miles from the civilized people and made to survive in a harsh environment with savage beasts and extreme cold, something they were not used to. These people began to evolve backwards and turn it from civilized persons to become like the savages they feared. Soon they lost language and communicated with grunts and fits of rage and other expressions. They began to grow hair all over their bodies as a result of the cold weather and began to walk on their all fours mimicking the animals around them. And like most animals, the males became, due to brute strength, dominant over the females. They found the best refuge was found uh, living in caves. They lost the ability. They did not know how to cook their food, so it was eaten raw. And they used fur from the animals they killed to wear as extra protection. They did not bathe. They did not know what to do with their dead. Cave life was not easy. And within their brain, they still possessed the process of black hatred that brought them into being as well as these blacks that made them walk across a hot desert in, it, in this hell hole. Forming in the minds of these Caucasian people, these ancestors of these modern racist Caucasian people, these white men and women that you see walk back and forth every day, their ancestors, deep in their ancestors' minds, the black man going to pay for what they have done to us. This European Caucasian has now been reduced to, to the level of any other beast of the field. He is now walking on all, his, all four. And even today, Caucasians have serious black problems. High heels were designed to keep the female more erect due to the problems with the back as thousands of years walking on all your fours made it where they can't stand straight. In fact, since Europeans come into power, all people are experiencing back problems, unable to walk erect. Instead of walking erect, people walk slumped over, which weakens the back and makes the stomach muscles more weak, so it's easy for the stomach to protrude or stick out. These people had to eat their foods raw, and still today, they love raw food, even meat. They still like wearing real fur, as well as killing animals. But now it is for pleasure instead of survival. In fact, murder of the darker is no longer priority, but the anger has increased to all life on this planet. They were exiled and placed in this, and placed in this cold, dark, environment, confined from civilized people. So now they do the same to animals. They put them in zoos and in homes across the land they conquered. During this time, they also befriended the dog. The dog was called his best friend. Not a black man's best friend, but the Caucasian's best friend, because the dog helped him to hunt and defend him from the various savage beasts. An animal befriending another animal to the benefit of each other. They began to have a great love for one another. And this cave people would even begin having sexual relations with the dog. And the female cave woman would get pregnant having babies with the dog. And you can see the traits, which is evident, the traits in them still exist today. Many Caucasians openly confess to wanting to marry their dog. And many uh, porno films showcase them having sexual relations with dogs and various animals. It is said that Caucasians' ears are developed more like a dog's ear. And when they get wet, many smell like the dog or a chicken. 
There are current pictures that even today, many of them at birth are born with tails. These tails are taken off at birth. Michael Vick, the football player, made a very bad mistake being accused of hurting the dog. And then he's a black man. Mike, you have become insane because you don't know what you've done by hurting the white man's best friend. There is more outcry and compassion for a dog than it is for a human being. They, can't, they make commercials with sad looking dogs that bring tears to their eyes. But I saw no tears for the victim of Bernie Madoff who lost their life saving in a Ponzi scheme. Sexual relations with the dog began what we now know of as oral sex. Dogs sniff each other's genitalia to express communication and licking them. These cave people copied the dog and found pleasure in their genitalia, in the licking. So now what was communication for the dog is now sexual pleasure for the caveman. Y'all still with me? Come on, we got a long way to go. I don't know how long, we got a long way to go. Come on, roll with me. All right, now. I think I left off. I believe we left off the uh, Caucasian people are living in the caves. It's a rough life. Their best friend is the dog. And the dog, well, actually, they copied the dog, the dog's behavior, because dogs lick one another for communication purposes. But they found pleasure in licking each other's uh, genitalia. They call it oral sex. They learn that activity from watching the behavior of dogs, and they continue this behavior today, and uh, some of y'all black revolutionaries, y'all like that kind of stuff too. <laughs> it's messed up how they trick us. The Caucasian male also copied dogs. The Caucasian female, of course, she had sex with the, with the dog. And the male did too. But the Caucasian male uh, copy dogs, when some male dog would express sexual frustration on another male, because most times uh, only the dominant animals are allowed to mate. And those animals that are allowed or denied uh, the mating process, they begin to turn on each other. So in turn, male cave people began to turn on one another. So it is no shock today that homosexual activity among them is rampant, and the female just copies what the male does as he has conquered her and she is his inferior. Having no, no true love for his female, she is basically used to produce more men. And girls are not as valued. The Caucasian woman, no matter how mature she is, is always referred to as a girl, never a woman. And the Caucasian male would later use boy to degrade the black man. Even today, this European male has no respect for his woman. He uses her as the great whore. He uses his media to paste her naked body everywhere he can and uses her to seduce other men who believe she is more valuable as she is the woman of the conqueror. But the conqueror doesn't care anything about her or any female. They are tools to be used 
for the for pleasure and the agenda of men. He uses his woman to weaken other men, the Jezebel of the Bible, all the while he seeks to enter the womb of the black woman, of where I'll discuss why later. But right now, these people are still living a savage life in the hills and the caves of Europe. Just like we would frown up if we sat next to sperm and ovum, of which is our beginning. These great and powerful people acknowledge to a point, but frown up and do not wish to talk about their ancestors living in caves. If you notice, they even remain truthful on the issue, and they never show dark people living in caves, even in the Geico commercial or on the Flintstone cartoon. They know who were living in caves, not to get the big head and say that blacks themselves haven't fallen this low, because many tribes of dark people practice savage ways, but none of humanity had fallen low as the Caucasians. Soon it will be time for them to get their revenge. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? It is time for them to get their revenge. So time does march on and move forward. And in our natural world, either you evolve or become extinct. A decision must be made about those living in caves. Black people and other dark people are always traveling and exploring, so now a group of them come among or upon these people of whom they look human but seem to have been reduced to living the life of a savage. The name given to these blacks was Moses. Again, Moses was not an individual. Moses was a group of people who came or found these Caucasian people living in these extreme and hard conditions in Europe. And being another human being, they wanted to help them. Moses also was a name based on characters in ancient African texts. This group of people done for the European cave dweller like people done for this little Caucasian girl abandoned by her family and left to be uh, raised by dogs in a kennel. There was a story, I believe I saw this on Oprah. There was a little white girl. She had had no human relationship or association. They found this human child. She behaved like the dog she had been left with. She barked, she scratched, and understood the communication of dogs. She was terrified when approached by a human being. It took months and months and years of therapy to help her to find her human side. Even at this time, the poor child likes to bark. The process took time, but these blacks had to endure the savage nature of these people. And since at heart they are human, they began to pick up quickly on the things human to them. But during a period of time they had lost. This is why Moses is a much respected figure in Caucasian society, even though he did not actually exist. But he was the one chosen to represent the beginning of a new chapter in the life of cave people turned savage. Time marches on some more. And this caveman is very hyper. His mind is becoming more sharp. And he hungers for knowledge. He continues to learn and interact with the darker people. His population and his, and his intelligence makes him to seek building his own cities, his own towns, and soon his own nation. The European was born from out of dark people. And the beginning of all his art, his science, his civilization, was based on what dark people had already produced and taught him. However, the European would never give the dark people credit because within his mind he must subdue and he must murder them, placing them in eventually into submission. 
Oh, y'all got to understand. Listen to me now. Even though darker people have gone to war with themselves for centuries, when this Caucasian began to explore the planet, and everywhere he goes, he discovers people of color. They greet him in peace and kindness. And even though he is a strange-looking human being, why do the blacks and other darker people, why do they treat this strange-looking man, greet him in, uh, with kindness? Why do the black and the darker people welcome this strange new person? Blonde hair and blue eyes. Like you, yeah, like that crew once said, opposites attract. And even, to, even today, even though the Europeans have committed some of the worst atrocities within the confines of uh, recorded human history, there is much love and compassion for him as opposites attract. He can do no wrong. The so-called Negro in the United States of America learned him so much. They learned they lie down in the street and let dogs bite them and be sprayed with fire hoses, making no attempt to defend themselves, hoping their love will quench this man's thirst for black blood, his hate for the dark. I've already spent time explaining the reasons behind the Caucasian mindset, and now he begins to roar out from the cave of Europe. Nothing will escape his lust for material wealth and vengeance upon the dark people of whom exiled him away from civilized nations. He is now becoming a different man. He is not the saddest cave man any longer. He is now a thinker and a planner. However, he is smart enough to hold on to what made him a savage when it comes to warfare and murder. And on that note, hold on to the next one. Hold on now. Woo! If I was in church, I'd say, good God, now, man, this Caucasian man, he's coming out of Europe. He's mad as hell. He's taking over. He, his heart is full of hatred and murder for the dark. Mm, mm, mm. He's a different He's no longer a caveman no more. He's a uh, no longer a savage beast. He's becoming a conqueror, a thinker and a planner. He begins to take advantage of his ability to lie and deceive his gift, whereas dark people trust him. He begins a campaign to conquer the darker people as well as befriend them and steal their knowledge. In many cases, after conquering them, make that knowledge as if it was his own. He is no longer a savage beast, but a thinking conqueror. Within the short time span of a few thousand years, this man, listen y'all, oh, listen, this man who was once walking on all fours, unable to bury his dead, eating food raw, he has now shot out of the cave to challenge the ancient people and their civilization. The European has a thirst for knowledge and blood humanity has never seen before. This Caucasian at first solely relies on his ability to physically subdue his prey. But as time goes on, by his thinking mind, realizes that his opponents are lovers of religion and believers in God. He is fascinated of how hundreds of people can be easily controlled without the use of physical force of where physical force could be used for better things. So before actual physical force, the European brings his false friendship and his God. Only in the event his God is rejected, then he'll bring physical force as he also continues to do this to this very day. If others do not accept his Christianity or political ideas, then he began to use threats of violence. In the past, there was no threat. He gathered his forces and vanquished those who dared defy him. Many blacks refused to give him proper credit for bravery and violence. In this, you underestimate him as he is extremely violent, smart, cutting, better than a fox. 
as he has locked up the fox in his zoo. Nothing has changed. He continues to use the same strategy. Why change something that works? As the dark people do not realize who they really have become. The European out of a cave has now either conquered many dark people or caused great fear among other races. He has used murder, lies, deceit, war, rape in order to conquer the world. The white man or racist Caucasian European without a doubt even in 2009, is the ruler of this planet. He has made all life bow to his will. The real, he is the Adam, and thrown the many animals and life forms in zoos. He has enslaved other human beings, turning them into animals who work not for themselves, but for his benefit, and they still do today. He takes any land, whether they are occupied by others or not, and will kill until animals or men become extinct. Even, oh, this is how, this is how rough this, the racist, these Caucasian people are. Even microscopic organisms haven't been able to avoid the wrath of the European Caucasian. Now he has become a scientist, very curious about his origins and that of other people. He is not pleased that everywhere he's gone, darker people were already there. He knows that even though he is a fierce warrior, knows that the only reason why he has come into power is due to the extreme division among the darker people. So something must be done before they realize that unification is the solution to dealing with this new and strange man in order to keep him in power as a physical force will not be enough to keep the darker people under control. Physical force. The white man knows physical force would not be enough to keep darker people under control. he got to be a little bit smaller, a little bit more wiser. The first phase has been completed. Filling the world with fear by physical force or violence. He begins to realize that not only is he the minority on the planet, but he is genetically inferior. He knows he must keep himself separate from the darker people as much as possible and not allow his people to freely integrate with them. So what we know as racism is introduced. Racism is a creation from the natural hate that made them what they are. But a device to, to protect his genetic survival and domination over those dark people. This, uh, the introduction of black commercial slavery was not just about some hatred for the dark, but it also was just a matter of economics, just simply free labor. Hatred was just a frosting on the cake to bring reason for such. Then religion embraces this to give God's approval. Such was so effective that a slave like uh, Sister Sojourner Truth even said she was happy and grateful for being a slave because it got her away from living a heathen African life that made her void of Jesus Christ of whom she only knew of as being uh, Caucasian. So it is no shock that just recently so Journal Truth was chosen to sit as a buff in the in uh, this nation's rotunda because she was uh, the perfect slave. The European scientists began to learn that they can only reproduce themselves. And in fact, they know they are a hybrid form of black people. Black people can naturally produce all the colors of humanity and even trick special to certain races, but they cannot produce black. Caucasian people cannot produce any uh, dark person. And this is this angers white or Caucasian. They cannot produce uh, color of no other race. It is amazing, even though the European has shown such a wicked history as well as racist planet, and
and exploited all forms of life, they are still held as angels and trusted. Yaku, the big head scientist, is smiling in his grave as his people who attract the opposite probably had no idea his kind of a man would become so successful. This racist European Caucasian man knows that he is genetically inferior. So the Caucasian scientists have tried to regain their melanin and humanity as humanity, as humanity was lost during the process that made them. This is why he sometimes referred him to himself as mankind or kind of a man. You look human, walk like a human, but not quite a human because you are a genetic mutation of the original of whom happens to be dark. In his attempt to reverse this genetic process, the European produced apes and monkeys. According to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teachings, prior to the Caucasians, these animals didn't exist. And I can't verify such. However, did you see what I said? I said, Elijah Muhammad said, I didn't say I said it. Elijah Muhammad said that apes and monkeys didn't exist prior to. Uh, to Caucasian people. But, at the same time, white folks have a saying, well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. And like the dog, the apes and monkeys are much loved. You need to wonder why? During that time, among a people whom they call Moses, they were given another animal, only to be used for medicinal purpose. Also, like themselves, a hybrid, a graphic creature, they call it the swine or hog. This animal was a mix of the cat, rat, and of course their favorite, the dog. The swine was used to clean up behind them and help heal any sickness by taking the flesh of this animal and placing it on a part areas of disease. They were told never to eat this animal, but as the years went on, in their anger and disrespect for the dark group, they ignored such warning. So today, this is one of their number one meats. And also, like, uh, like the dog, they keep them as pets. Hold on. Stay rolling. Go on to the next video. Are you still with me? Are you still hanging? Come on. Walk with me now. Don't give up on me. We got to understand who this man is. I'll be a monkey's uncle. Not me. I can't be the uncle uh, of a monkey. It's them. They know what they're talking about. They said it. I didn't. So don't get angry at me if you were, if your uh, uncle is a monkey. I think I left off again. How the swine is another one of their favorite animals. Again, I do not claim that these things are an accurate or valid history, but it, it explains the unexplained, much like some claim that Willie Lynch was not a real person. However, the effect presented by Lynch is real and still has black people and darker people messed up in the head. The Chinese or Asian people will later take this swine along with the goldfish to make them hybrids we see common today. The most important thing for Caucasian today is to keep the dark people under submission as it is a matter of genetic survival. His existence itself is at stake. In most dark cultures, the male's penis and sex itself is something embraced and celebrated. However, for the European, it is quite the opposite, as sex is what placed them in this predicament and made them inferior genetically. So instead of celebration of sex, there is hatred, mockery, and the insulting of the father and sex itself. The European uses his media to present sex as filthy and vile as possible with the sucking of the penis, the licking of the vagina, and other nasty acts under the guise of seeking pleasure, but in fact, not pleasure, it is hatred. The penis, 
especially the dark penis, represent his destruction without even going on a battlefield, but done in a bedroom. Surely such is frustrating when he thinks about it. This Caucasian, here I am, the most powerful European ruler of this world, the creator of the greatest dynasty in our modern era, in the history of men, of humanity. And uh, I am threatened with a nuclear bomb, but not so much worried about it. I'm so more worried about the explosion of male sperm. It is not a good thought by any means. There is hatred toward the Caucasian female because she would not reject but accept a dark baby. So he has no choice but to keep her away from dark people or use her to his advantage so that she can seduce this dark penis away from his own so he can create a different hybrid that will contain this melanin with the mind of the Caucasian so the Caucasian can live on. If it is done correctly, should the most awful happen, even if the white man goes extinct, he makes sure his mind will survive in darker people. So now we see him offering more friendships to the darker. And these darker people have dark skin, but their minds are like that of the Caucasian. These blacks, I call them dark Europeans. These blacks have no love for dark. They murder black people. They lie to black people. They are deceivers and whoremongers, seekers of material wealth. We can shout black pride all we wish, but we seriously underestimate the Caucasian European as he is trying to survive, whether that be physically or mentally. In fact, many black, uh, many blacks crying black power or African liberation have the same mind as the Caucasian replacing white supremacy with black supremacy. The main mistake we make when dealing with Caucasians is that we believe he is just an American white person of whom are not the most brightest of Caucasians as they indulge us with drugs, liquor, excessive sex, watching violent sissy movies, etc., etc., make them unaware of what their leaders and scientists are up to and if necessary, some of them will be eliminated for the sake of the whole. Did you hear what I said, Caucasian people? Some of y'all, you think that your people, your Caucasian people, the rulers in power, you think they really care about your uh, welfare when some of y'all can be expendable. And it ain't the rich. It's the middle class and the poor that are expendable. Those down low on the total totem pole. What must be understood about the Caucasian is that he has become more than just a hybrid of humanity, but in fact now he has become a god. This is why dark people have yet to be able to deal with him as our, uh, our idea of God is some unknown mysterious being. God is only a title, like lawyer. It's just a title, like reverend. It's just a title. God only means that which has force and power. The Caucasian has shown himself to be a great force and a great power. He has made all to submit to his will and accomplish what Adam was supposed to do. He has made this planet his own. He has renamed the planet, the people, and all forms of life. And for example, the dark people call themselves African when they know the original continent was not Africa. It was named after the European explorer Africana. Based on the Egyptian calendar, it should be at least 4,000 years or something. But since the European has become God, they changed the recorded time based on their fictional Jesus of the Bible with no respect for past lives of ancient people. And all the races on the planet that know this time is not correct Accept this at time. Why? What the hell? All of the dark peoples of the earth severely do not understand and underestimate this European people. This European Caucasian man, even though at this time 
with no doubt of great power to be reckoned with has now become paranoid because he is still the minority population. His people are aborting their babies as a, as a result from trying to trick doctor people to kill theirs due to economic pressures and the mortality as well as his people being sterile is also high. With all his power comes a dread insecurity in losing it to the very people they hate. And what is more mind-boggling and makes them sad is that not only could they be talking about superior physical form, but slowly but surely they could be taken out of power by a penis, particularly that of the black man. What must be understood about this Caucasian man is even though he is uh, very great, he wears a tie, he eats with a spoon, he drives a car, etc. Even in 2009, he still carries with him some of his caveman traits. So like many male animals, he must pump himself out and use threatening gestures in order to let lesser males know he is the dominant male. He talks about peace, but at the same time, he reminds the world of his nuclear weapon and his great army, as well as technology to cause countless human death. He looks like a well-able human adult, but in reality, his mind is like that of a child, an infantile. He behaves like a child, giving free access to a jar of candy. Many children do not like sharing and must be taught the value of sharing and conflict resolution without violence. The Caucasian has roared out of a cave and become excited about this world of material things and like the child at a candy jar did not want to share and use violence in order to gain such. Compared to other races on the planet of whom use gold and other things, they did not place high value on these things. They were just material to you. But this shiny metal and other material things excited this man that just come from out of the cave, this baby of humanity. Compare the Caucasian European racist people to how children behave on the playground. Again, the reason why we have problems dealing with him because our minds have also become infantile. Except with him, he is a child given great power as the teenager behind the wheel of a 6,000 pound automobile. This European has a childish mentality, but he is still very smart. He has developed powerful weapons of mass destruction. He creates humans from, uh, in tombs. He, re he redesigns animals and plants. He shapes the earth according to his needs. He sends people into space and his machines into outer space. All of them. All of them. We're going to go ahead into conclusion. Hold on with me, man. Hold on, y'all. Go to the next video. So, he is a, uh, has a child mentality, but he has been given great power. This European has a child mentality, but he is still very smart. He has developed powerful weapons of mass destruction. He shapes the earth according to his own needs. Not only do dark people have a sick attraction to him, but also there is great fear. They do not say it, but it is like meeting God in person. And some do view him as God, as pictures of a Caucasian man called the Christ hangs in many homes. He is no joke. He is a master trickster and deceiver. He is always compared to a snake. And the native people said he spoke with a forked tongue, also describing him as a snake, as snakes slither below other animals, very hidden and quietly. Then suddenly he may bite and place into his victim poison, toxins that will cause death. And this European in power has done exactly that. Everything he has bitten or touched causes death, chaos, and destruction. The earth has never seen hell among humanity since its introduction. His history shows no moments of peace, only constant war. Again, 
He has nothing to play with. If you don't come correct, then you better not come at all, no matter what method you choose. The European Caucasian, including those calling themselves American, are not impressed by peace talk. They don't understand power. If you show them power, that is the only way they will back off. Just like the lion will give you will give you respect with a chair in your hand, a chair and a whip. Although he walks upright and plays golf, he is still a savage, and you must get a whip and a chair or risk being eaten like many have. The Caucasian is powerful, very wise. The master at propaganda and mind control. He has learned how to use religion, liquor, drugs, sex, media, etc. To, uh, to his advantage in order to keep not only dark people under control, but his own people of whom some may be sacrificed for the benefit of the whole. As animal experimentation is limited. So under the guise of health care, the government allowed diseases and drugs be tested even on certain population of white communities. He is devious. And after he has gained his riches from murder, war, slavery, and theft. But now, since he has his, he has the nerve to tell the world how to live a righteous life. And since he is skilled at deception, and he is feared the world accepts this, all the while knowing in fact he has not changed only the methods of gaining material wealth and slavery is now voluntary. No matter how large or small you view the activity of Caucasian persons in power, they document their activity and there is a reason behind everything they do. If the American government opened up secret files from yesterday, as well as today to the public, as an honest government would do to its citizens, we would be shocked, we would be appalled, we would be angry. The emotion could not be described as not only black, but white themselves, even though they clear believe what not only America has done, they would not believe what America has done and what the European Caucasians have done while on this planet. And they hope that you'll stay drunk. They hope that you stay addicted to drugs or sucking up some penis so your mind will never get to the point to truly request such information or listen to those who suggest such information. Knowing he is the minority on this planet, this uh, racist Caucasian man, he has become paranoid about his genetic survival. And his main goal now is to keep the dark peoples from unification at all costs. This was the purpose of the system of racism, a system designed to protect him from genetic destruction or annihilation, as well as his, keep his position as a world power. He loves to see blacks and other races fighting among each other. And many times he is behind the scenes causing the trouble. So as long as they kill one another, his position of being dominant is secure. This is why, as soon as a black man or group designed for dark people's upliftment must be immediately targeted and the propaganda machine must first be brought into use. And if necessary, paint these black races and traitors to this country as worthy of being legally executed. So when they are dead, the other dark people will agree with this action such in the case of the Black Panthers, Marcus Garvin, and other black uh, freedom fighters in the United States. Now, our position is secure. The threat is extinguished. Unfortunately for them, as they believe murdering the physical body will make them safe, they do not take into consideration and do not know how to destroy the idea that birthed these revolutionary type brothers and sisters. Malcolm X and many of our other leaders are deceased, but it is still rebellion among the dark people and the fear is the power that dark people will gain when they become unified. These 
Caucasians know black unification would be, be the beginning of the end of their world and the earth will return to what it once was, hopefully better from going through thousands of years with this experience having gone by. He will not leave without a fight, but he is seriously outnumbered. This is why whites or Caucasians in power always brag about they ain't got the power to blow the earth up ten times over. And if I can't have it, then you won't have it either. You can have a black power all you wish. That is nothing compared to the power of a God. And that's who you're dealing with, black man, until you accept and realize this. You never have no idea how to defeat him once and for all. This is why. Even in the Bible, it speaks about the battle in the sky. It is going to take more than physical force to remove this God from power as he has entered into the most pro-black, the most pro-black liberated mind. Many Africans speak English and worship Jesus more sincere than the European that gave it to them after they were conquered. Because even though in some instances the racist Caucasian people are not actually living with these blacks, they're not uh, living there any longer, they have his mind. And that is why Africa is having a problem healing itself because it has the mind of this God. And success is based on how this God comes into power. Whether it was good or bad. This Caucasian people who are now the gods of this planet had to remove everything from the previous administration or claim it as their own creation. So now black is evil, white is good. If blacks were not eating pork, then the whites must eat it. And this guy must create something different from what once was. There are white people or Caucasians in the background of whom you'll never see or know about who advise their leaders and governments on how they should go about securing genetic survival and holding on to world domination. But unfortunately for them, something unexpected has happened. Many Caucasians are becoming angry and frustrated and sick of this mindset. They have grown tired of the constant greed, the wars and the murder, the exploitation of the planet. Since this dark man has a sick love and attraction, he is unable to deal with these people in an appropriate manner. However, other Caucasians do not have this sick love and growing and, uh, and they are growing with discontentment. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches with great dissatisfaction comes great change. And on that note, I'm going to bring this all into conclusion on the last video. So hold on tight with me. Hold on tight with me. Make sure that you leave your comments. All right, I'm going to bring this to conclusion, and before I actually bring this to conclusion, I want to put my little two cents in on this beer summit that President Obama just had with uh, Louis Gates and this uh, Crowley police officer person. This whole situation is corny, and it's very pitiful. Now, you have racism. Now all of a sudden everything is all right. Everything will never be all right because the, the, uh, the conditions that have set this forth still exist. There has not been no honest dialogue in dealing with racial issues, black descendants of slaves living among a society of Caucasian people who are biased against the dark. Either, either we are going to be equal or black people need to separate. 
If black people pay equal taxes, if we give our lives just as equally, we should be treated the same, but we're not. We're not getting any of the benefits. We have to beg for things that we have earned. And until we have honest dialogue and straighten these things out, if I am your roommate, which that's what we are, black people are roommates in this house, but I'm paying my bills but not getting equal treatment, then if you are in a situation like this, if you are a roommate in a house, paying equal bills, paying your fair share, but not getting equal benefits, fair benefits, then you leave. But because, like Yakub said, we are attracted and have this sick love for Caucasian people, just like a woman who's been abused, we are always willing to take them back. Long as they smile, as long as they hug us, give us a million dollars, kiss us, and whatever. What are they they come up with? We accept it because we have a sick love instead of getting the hell out of the house. And many of these women who stay with abusive men, or some of these men who stay with abusive women that, that hurt them, in many cases, that person who is abusing them ends up murdering them. So it is the same. We have been murdered in this nation for over 300 years. If Professor Gates had made the wrong move, I can guarantee you he'd be a, he'd been dead as a doorknob. And now he's smiling. Everything all right, the same old slave mentality. Yes, all right, sir. Yes, sir. sir. You, sir. I, I, maybe I was wrong, sir. You do not earn white people respect by saying, yes, sir, sir. All that you do is enforce their mentality that they are supposed to rule over you and they can do to you whatever they want. In conclusion, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches, with great dissatisfaction comes great change. If it were not time for change, I would not be speaking with you today. Nor will we see the daily dissatisfaction among Europeans. And they have no problems with calling a spade a spade. They know who the real troublemakers are. You do not see white folk picking in front of any Negro leader's house. I do not have any idea this subject would last so long. But again, let me, let me bring it to its conclusion. No matter what opponent that comes against us, if we seek to become successful, we should study and understand it or them. Whenever our team loses, they review the videotape so they'll know what they had caused them to lose, or they could also learn the reason why the other team won and use their own strategy against them. We must study the history and understand the mindset of this Caucasian European. Understand the how or why he has become a God. Are we intelligent enough to use his own strategy against him and understand his mentality by figuring out the process of which made him what he has become? I am sure many white themselves will agree with me in that something must be done to bring an end to those Caucasians who are in power, sick from material greed, and, and suffer from excessive fear of genetic destruction, who allow for a few dollars the continuous poison of the uh, air, the food and the water, with no regard to future generations, black or white, but have great fear of genetic extinction. I am sure that I, I have missed some important parts, but I believe by this time, y'all get the picture. And I hope that you no, this uh, is not about hatred, dislike. It is about understanding and being real, like we used to say in the hood. You cannot hate a dog for acting like a dog. Elijah Muhammad, my spiritual teacher, did not teach hate. He was giving us an idea of the mentality of our oppressors. And since they were born from the hatred of the dark, we need to learn how to adjust 
just like we are jealous to the barking dog. The white man or his racist European is only doing what he is supposed to do. Just like dogs bark, cats meow. You cannot hate them for doing what they supposed to do. You have to learn how to deal with that behavior. This white man is doing what he is supposed to do. We must know what we are dealing with and act appropriately. If not, we pass this madness like we have to future generations. If there is one. This European racist Caucasian is not some bum laying drunk in the street. The European Caucasian is the ruler of this world and has become a god. Only a god can deal with a god until you move beyond black power and revolution and become a god yourself. Honestly and truthfully, I'm going to tell you, you ain't got nothing coming. Because physical force is not going to remove this man. He's too powerful. He is beyond your physical force, your guns and your knives or whatever weapons you think that you got. You ain't got nothing coming. You cannot beat him anyway because your people are divided. And some of them hate you. You got to play this more smarter. You got to be more wiser. You got to be more clever. Or you'll be become extinct. Just like what this Caucasian person is trying not to become genetically extinct. I'm your brother. Talik even Ron. This has been a long journey, but I hope we've learned something. And I also always open to learning things. Jot down your comments. Send me an email. Peace for heaven always. Think about it. Think about it. Otherwise, why did you leave? Why did you listen to this series for so long? Peace, y'all. For heaven always.